For goodness sake, what was that? Oh, the paper boy. I could have done without that. It never used to worry me when there were the two of us living here in this great big house. But now she has gone and died. It's as though the soul has been ripped out of it and I'm getting so jumpy. I've even started talking to myself to fill in the awful silences. Mind you, come to think of it, she wasn't much company anyway. Oh, made sure that I kept a respectful distance. She was the lady and I was only the servant. <laughs> this is the last day I shall be wearing this, that's for sure. Of course, Alice is not my real name. But when I came here in this house, the scullery maid was called Alice. And you wore it, like it or lump it. Well, no more after today. But let's just get today over and done with. It's the last thing I have to do for her, and I'd better get it right or she will haunt me. A bossy madam she was. A stickler for etiquette. At times I have hated her and resented her. But, if I'm fair, she was trapped here as much as I was. I'll miss her. And then what? What is to become of me? The house is to be sold and I'll have no home and no job. I can't imagine there'd be a queue of people wanting to employ a 73-year-old housekeeper. Where did I put that newspaper? I could look in situations vacant, I suppose. No use worrying, one bit at a time, Alice. I came here to this house in Southampton before the war. The First World War, that is, when I was just 14. That was me there. I was bonnier then, full of highfalutin ideas. Willing to start at the bottom as a scullery maid, intending to work my way up, of course. I could put up with hard work for a while. Well, that was the plan. Of course, there were lots of servants here originally. This photo's a bit faded, but they were all here to serve the old master and mistress and their one and only child, her. Three years older than me she was and engaged to be married to an officer. What a wedding that would have been. Now she is gone, there ain't none of them left. She never married. Well, not after the tragedy, and nor for that matter did I. There were few men left to marry, Southampton was a town of widows and orphans, but I'm running ahead of myself. After I'd been here a year or two, I was pig sick of scrubbing and cleaning and being at everybody's beck and call. That clock was the bane of my life. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Never was enough time to do everything. Oh, I wanted more. Adventure was what I needed. My brother worked as a riveter in the Belfast shipyards. It sounded a rough old world, but exciting. I looked forward to his scribbled notes and crept off somewhere quiet to read them. I knew he exaggerated a bit, but that all added to the glamour of it. Then he started writing about a big ship he was working on and said to watch out for it because it'd be coming here to Southampton to be fitted out prior to sailing the high seas bound for Cherbourg and New York. At last I could see a way of escaping. 
scullery maids were bound to be needed on board. I knew I wouldn't earn much, but at least I would see the world. People had to eat after all. The ship was magnificent and I did get the promise of a job, more by luck than anything else. And so did the butler as a steward. And John, the gardener's boy, I don't know what his job was, but sweet on him I was. It didn't seem so scary if they were travelling as well. We didn't know it at the time, but the young mistress's fiancé was one of the serving officers on it too. Oh, I was so excited. I could hardly contain myself. But then, she wouldn't give me a reference, so I couldn't go. The upper classes did that for the likes of us working folks in those days, especially if you were a hard worker. Furious I was for days. I resented the very air she breathed, and I couldn't bear to watch it sail without me. But then, a few days later, we heard the news. The ship had sunk, taking most of the crew and passengers with it. Her fiancé did not survive, and nor did John, and my heart went with him. The butler survived, only to be called up and killed in the First World War. I considered myself very lucky to have a roof over my head and food to eat, as so many people starved. As living servants left, they were replaced by women who came in for a few hours a day. Eventually, there was just her and me living here. I didn't feel I could leave here because, in a way, she had saved my life, as the ship, of course, was the Titanic. Excuse me, could you help me? Of course. Is everybody here now? Uh, yes, I think so. They're all waiting in the drawing room. Oh, thank goodness. The, the hearse is due to arrive at 10 to 2 for a service at 2 o'clock. Um, if you could have them all ready to go, that would help so much. Um, I'd hate them to keep her waiting. You know what a stickler she was for punctuality. But aren't you coming with us? Oh, no. No. You have friends and relatives. I'm the housekeeper. It wouldn't be right. But you have been with her so long. It's as she would have wished it. When you come back, I'll have a meal laid up for you in the dining room and the will will be read afterwards in the, in the old master's study. Will that be satisfactory? Yes, thank you. Thank you. That got me out of that one. I really didn't know how I was going to tell that toffee-nosed lot to put a move on. Don't panic, Alice. Keep busy. Just the last few finishing touches and then it's all ready. <laughs> They're back. Here we go. Take a deep breath. You can do it. Well, at least that's over with. This morning I had no idea what I was going to do, but now I do. She has left me a little bit of money, so that I won't have to go hunting for another job. Well, not for a while anyway. And this morning's newspapers give me an idea. Yesterday, the QE2 that was launched on the Clyde a couple of years ago, sailed from Southampton on her maiden voyage bound for Cherbourg and New York. One day, one day I'll be on it, not part of the crew, but as a passenger. I can hold my head up high, I've repaid my debt to her, I've done my duty and now I'm no longer trapped here. I feel free to go wherever I want. I'm free! My real name? I'd almost forgotten. It's Dorothy. The same as hers.